And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer into the temple, coming to us straight from the land of the Headless Hydra, and the lead and the lead writer on the on the upcoming mod on the upcoming module and setting adventures agency for D and D five e the one and only Alex Pirota. I'm hoping I got that pronounced right. Actually, really did. Yeah, well done. I've had people screw up my actual last name, so I try not to repeat that. But how you doing tonight, man? <laughs> I'm all right, man. How are you? I am. Do I am doing good. Um, I, it is, we're in the, we're in the dog days of summer and I hate it. Me too. I know. 100 degrees down where I am. I know people say, also, um, anytime I have, I've established a rule that anyone who says, but it's a dry heat should be, should be, um, should be smacked, should be smacked across, should be smacked across the face. <laughs> Yeah, oh. that don't make it better. That's kind that of, really. <laughs> that's kind. That's kind of like. That's kind of like say. That's kind of like someone say. Someone saying, "Hey, at least you didn't. At least you didn't get kicked in the face after you've gotten kicked in the balls." Mm -hmm. And yeah, they're that's technically good right, but. Yeah. The the analogy that my mentor would always use in this situation is: Is it worse to get shit on by a pigeon or a blue jay? <laughs> right. Oh. It matters. Yeah, it matters so little. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Either way, you're still getting shit on. So, mm -hmm. and at least when at least when it comes to the when it comes to the cold, you can always put on an extra layer. Exactly. Exactly. Oh. With the heat, you just sit there and suffer. Mm -hmm. So, I'd like to open with the humble beginnings, in a sense. Sure. Walk me through your first introduction to role-playing games and what made it stick. Um, so, my nerd journey, such as it were, started when I was really really young um a, i was over at a friend's house and he was playing um he had a friend come he had another friend come over and they were playing magic the gathering um and i was hooked like i thought that was the coolest thing ever um but i didn't get my first pack of cards until fifth edition of magic which was like five years after that um, so I was maybe 10 years old at the time. And ever since then, like even, even before I got those cards, like I was, I was just always a fan of like fantasy stuff. Like I grew up on Redwall, um, on Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time, um, that sort of stuff. So like, I've always sort of been a, like role-playing game adjacent. Um, but I didn't actually pick up D and D until i want to say like 2019 um after i saw stranger things um and after i sort of i, I had a, there was a guy his his wife was a co-worker of mine um and she made a comment about like on facebook about um starting a new D, &D campaign and i reached out and was like hey can i be in on it and i loved it Mm -hmm. Absolutely loved it. That was what made a stick. Yeah. And um, well, since you mentioned since you mentioned a background with we with Wheel of Time, I'm get I'm get I'm guessing you I'm guessing um you learned very quickly how to juggle a bunch of characters at once because that's what <laughs> you have to do with Robert Jordan's work. Yep. Yeah. Yep. He just he likes doing that. It's and it helps, you know, to sort of keep multiple plot lines 
in your head at the same time. Like when I D and D game now, like I'm sort of in the middle of a Curse of Strahd campaign, and it's been a couple months since we were able to get everyone together to play, and everyone's like, "I don't know where we are. I don't remember what we're doing." Like I do. How how do you not? I remember this. I remember it perfectly. <laughs> It's all thanks to Robert Jordan, I think. Oh, uh, and I I pick on I pick on him, but I but I pick on everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so I suppose that I I think that's as good of a segue into in, um, talk to me about the origin story of Adventurers Agency, since the sales pitch when I was first um being made aware being made aware of it. Is that it? Is that it was? Fo- it was it was a module that was bu- that was built around um, having having some having a backup in case somebody no showed, which le- which yeah. let's be honest is going to happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's that's really kind of what it was. Was um, I had a group of friends from high school that I was. Um, that I was running a campaign for and oh you know my kid is sick uh oh uh, you know I ran I, things went late at work um you know my, my wife is, is sort of taking me out to dinner um stuff like that where it would either it would either be like I would know sort of maybe a day or two in advance that we weren't going to have a game or I would get the notification like five seconds before start time um and it got frustrating because you know i would have this i would have a plan i, I bought a module i bought curse of strahd um i bought uh, what's the the one that's set in the, the jungle um tomb of annihilation yes thank you i was it was escaping me for a sec. You know, I but like I, I had all these modules and these were like these are like long running campaigns that have story and everyone has to be involved and everyone has to, you know, be there or else they miss plot points. Um, so if someone wasn't there, it made it really, really tough because not only were they missing out, but everyone else, you know, would have to sort of backtrack and explain. They wouldn't know what was going on. Like it, it just got, it got so frustrating. Um, the other thing that was problematic was, you know, you, you hear that and you're like, oh, we'll just run one shots. The thing about one shots, all the one shots that I could find on the internet are they're like books. Like they are genuinely, you know, 15, 20 pages long. And if I don't know that someone's bowing out until like an hour before the, the session, I don't have time to read all that. I don't have time to set that all up. You know, it, like it's not, it's just not feasible. Um, so I wanted to solve for that. I wanted to create something that would sort of give me an opportunity to run a game for people who were there and you know able to participate and do it in a way that you wouldn't miss anything. Mm-hmm. You know, like if you weren't there, so what? Um, but I didn't want it to be like Monster of the Week. I, I was really particular. I had a really sort of really sort of particular thing in mind. I wanted it to be sort of like individual missions like episodes of of a tv show almost you know where you 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 just go with what you have and you have to solve the problem or you have to defeat the monster or you have to rescue the damsel or you have to find the treasure Mm -hmm. whatever the whatever the objective was um and so i started looking for that and I couldn't find anything that was like that. So I figured I might as well make one. I, I know I'm not the only person who has this problem. And I know I'm not the only person who wants a solution for it. So the Adventures Agency was born from that. Born, you can almost say it was born from desperation. <laughs> um, there's, a uh, sa- there's a saying that I... There's a saying that... I he- that I keep hearing get ban- get bandied about in one form or another for years. Necessity is the mother of invention. Mother of invention, yeah, absolutely. And that's that's basically what it was. 
Yeah, that's a really good call because I needed something and I didn't have anything. Mm -hmm. Now, if you were to if you were to give the elevator pitch for what sort of what sort of fantasy adventures agency is, um, how would you how would you do that elevator pitch? Ooh, an elevator pitch for it. Um, well, I'd say that it's high fantasy um, with sort of darker elements laced throughout, um, sort of woven together in a way that's sort of designed to empower players rather than nerf them. Which is an int- which is an e- interesting uh, situation, especially given how there's this narrative that uh, that D- that D and D gets boring after after once you get into the higher levels. Mm-hmm. Which whether or not whether or not that's true whether or not that's true is in inco- is inconsequential in my opinion. What right. but I find the reasoning why people would think that. To be far more interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I don't think that's necessarily the case. One of the things that makes D and D so exciting for me um, is the the sense of power, is that sense of ability. You know, I just created this build. I I, I don't know how many people. But everyone that I know does this. Like I don't know what the percentage of players is that do this, but they all sort of make builds, and they all have scenarios in mind when they're making these builds. And like, oh yeah, you know, this 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 rogue can do so much damage. Oh, this this wizard's got so many utility spells. Like, and and they just sort of game out in their minds these incredible things that these empo- these powerful empowered characters can do to me that's that's like the gist of the draw for the game and that was kind of what i wanted and so if you're going to get bored at high level that's on the dm to double the number of monsters or to triple the cr of of you know the boss because the last thing I want to do is take away that feeling of empowerment, that that excitement that people get. Like, yeah, I want to use this this cool new thing, or I want to like, yeah, I can do so much damage, or I can do so many cool moves. I want to try them all out. You know, I want them to feel that as I beat their faces in. Now, when it com- now with that in- with that in mind, um, if if some if given that one of the big one of the big claims to fame is being able to handle the game, even if some even if somebody has to cancel, um, mm-hmm. how does how does the module um, handle that situation? Um, so essentially what the way that it's designed currently is as a series of one shots that are really really easy to do and you can do them in sort of a couple of different ways you can sort of ad lib it um you can read sort of story synopsis like take five minutes read this short little blurb about who the different characters are and how you know it's quote supposed to go um and then go from that or it's going to be one of those sort of longer more traditional one shots where it's you know 12 pages long and you know it's packed with description of of you know the bathroom of the lord's house or wherever um the thought is that so this is something that Shane and I have been working on but on his website we're going to try to put like a like a quick and dirty monster calculator mm-hmm. I want three encounters I want them to be you know sort of easy medium deadly and 
this is you know sort of how I want this to go through and you input the module that you're going to do and it gives you hey you need two guards for the first encounter four guards for the second encounter and the big boss for the third one mm -hmm. and he, this is how much damage he's going to do you know you need him to do um something like that where it's just it's as quick and easy to do oh no i lost a player i was planning on having this run by four people now i'm only going to have three this combat's too tough for three i just go to that that tool input that change and off it goes and instead of just having it be sort of these monster of the day things because it's tied into this sort of overall world, you have the opportunity to, to take characters and advance them, obviously, but you also have the opportunity to thread in um, sort of more longer-running antagonists, mm -hmm. gangs that are menacing uh, your area of the city, political coups that could be brewing, um, you know, elections of of different members of the of the parliament you start at the beginning of the election cycle and you work your way through and you have to sort of undo espionage or steal secrets about the other guy um stuff like that so even if you miss a session you're not missing out on the entire story which i can i can certainly get i can certainly get behind that and i'm guessing that that you have that you have a means to allow pe allow people to get ca to get caught up pretty to get caught up pretty easily if they have to if they have to skip a week. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's nothing written in. You just don't necessarily need to know that. Oh yeah, you know they they beat this guy. Um, this week. Now they just I they get you get told. Yeah, we beat this guy and we got this reward. Mm -hmm. Something. Now, if I if I read it correctly, you guys are also doing a kind of uh, a kind of monster of the week ap approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. So as oh. much as I said, <laughs> as much as I sorry, please continue. Uh, just talk. Just talk to me about that and how, and how that would work. How that would work out. Yeah. <laughs> so as much as I said that wasn't what I wanted, um, that was one of the very first pieces of feedback that Shane gave me. Is like, hey, why don't we do like a monster of the week thing? <laughs> and I fought him on it. I was like, I don't want to do that. Um, but ultimately, I came around to it because it's actually not a bad thing to do. Um, you know, going out there and beating some fun thing some fun creature some fun boss um the the way that you do that the way that you sort of get there is built into the module um so you don't have to spend time oh well you know roll to to travel roll to to set guards and see if you get ambushed in the middle of the night you don't have to deal with that you just written into it is the passage stones you just take a passage stone to your destination and you fight the monster mm -hmm. um yeah that was that's essentially how it how it works is we have a whole bunch of different monsters and we have sort of a couple of additional mechanics layered on so you can take your boring old troll and you can spice him up giving him an, an, an in-story reason to have necromantic powers mm -hmm. or lightning power yeah randomly generated now i'd like to delve a little bit more into the player options starting Good. with the starting with the two new races the centauran and the mutants and mm -hmm. sent and given given the description about mutants i think i think that's also a good opportunity to segue into the emphasis on ley lines. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so ley lines are, this was something that I've wanted to do in 
even before I started playing D and D. Um, like I wanted to have magic duels or, or magic battles in Magic the Gathering set under a ley line that would amplify the effects of of certain spells. I thought that that would be just super fun. Um, but that's basically the so the basic idea of it is it's like magical weather. Um, you have sort of these upswellings of magic that come about in, you know, some, some of them are seasonal. So like one of them that I wrote in the, the, the sort of the great on um, over the great Northern Plains, there's the great fire ley line. The great fire ley line brings with it the dry season because it is this massive upswelling of fire energy and it boils off, uh, you know, any water or ice or, or cold that's in the area. Um, and then alternatively, there's sort of more localized ones, smaller ones, more random ones that can pop up that, um, again, they're magical weather. And, you know, as you're casting your spells, you sort of imbue your spells with this ambient magical energy that's just sort of floating around you at all times in these heavily concentrated lines. Um, and that sort of is the idea behind ley lines that, you know, these incredibly powerful things naturally generated, they're, they're just forces of nature, but can be used by people to, to their advantage. Um, mutants are, are kind of one of those, those things, um, mutated by people sometimes using ley lines, sometimes not, sometimes they're imbued with ley line energy, sometimes they're not just depends on how you the player wants to you know wants to to pull that sort of background in um but that's what they are is in this city of excess of this this cosmopolitan city of rich people and excess and scientific advancement um there are some unscrupulous dudes and they do human experiments when they probably shouldn't. And the results are these sort of amalgamations of people and animals, people and plants, people and sort of other things. Um, these poor unfortunate souls that are sort of left to live their lives and then you as an adventurer can you know make something of yourself at the adventurers agency short plug for the business mm -hmm. um but you know the the idea is that they are sort of the symptom of of hubris mm -hmm. and when it comes to oh, when when mutants or the or the equivalent have been used in other games, um, sometimes there's a table for random mutation. Do you have something similar to that, or or is the or is that not really a factor? So it is, um, and it's it is in in sort of two different ways. Um, obviously, this is at the DM's discretion, um, but you you can sort of choose. Okay, I want to be. I want to be mixed with a dog. And you have the option to roll, or you can, I suppose you could probably just choose. Um, being mixed with a dog means that I get floppy ears. Or it means that I have a tail that wags automatically when I'm happy. Um, you know, something like that. Some sort of a mutation. So, you, you know, from the outside, you're, a, you're just a garden variety person. Just walking down the street, and then all of a sudden, whoop, the, there's a tail sticking out the back of his pants. Um, that's sort of the, that like, it, it's not, it's as overpowering as you want to make it, basically. Mm -hmm. The idea of these mutations. You can be, it can be subtle, or it can be totally overt and out there, and it's really up to the players and their DM. And I I can certainly get I can certainly get behind that. Now, 
on the on the other end of the spectrum, uh, I'd like to d I'd like to delve a bit into the into the subclasses that are mentioned in the primer and what yeah. they would bring to their particular to the class that they're associated with. And yeah. I'll start with the one that's on the Kickstarter page itself, the Layblade Fighter. Mm hmm. He he might be my favorite. That one. Or she, I think the artist is a woman. Um, yeah, that one is really fun because I didn't like. So one of the things that I didn't like was that Eldritch Knight was the only way to sort of use magic as a martial class. Um, well, Eldritch Knight and I guess sort of the half casters, and I guess the the, the what's the arcane trickster. Um, yeah. but really that's kind of it unless you wanted to go like and, and, and burn a feet to gain some sort of um, arcane power this is a world that has these random upswellings of magic inherent sort of in the fabric of the world give it to melee classes and so that's kind of what I did was I created these, essentially, it, it, it functions a little bit like the Battlemaster. You get the um, uh, the superiority die, mm -hmm. and they, they sort of grow in level as you, as you go along. But instead of Battlemaster techniques, you essentially get spells. And you get little cantrips um, that you can roll as... And you know, as your dice grows, their effect grows larger as well. And you sort of, as you grow in the subclass, are able to utilize magic. Amb it's just ambient natural magic floating around you. You're able to use it more and more and do more effective things and do really cool things. Like one of my favorite ones is, I think at level 15, um, you can burn a superiority die, I think, to give yourself just an ambush round. Like you and your entire party. Mm -hmm. When you roll initiative, you're just like, nope. Ambush round. Something like that, where it's just like, it's not... It, it, it just is. Like, you, you just... You're so good with the magic that's in the air around you that you're just able to manipulate it to your own end. To me, that idea is just so cool. Like, instead of just having, you know, to rely on what, what's at hand, you instead rely on what's at hand as well as what's around you. Mm -hmm. And truth be told, I ha I've had a mixed attitude when it comes to half-casters as far as how well they fulfill the Gish fantasy, because mm -hmm. you look at a lot of Gish classes, if you're and um, stop me if you ha if you're not familiar with that term. Um, I'm not actually. Um, Gish is it start it started as the nickname for Gith Zerai, but in practice mm -hmm. it is the it is the it is the term is a term for those who are supposed to be good at martial and magic. Mm -hmm. But the problem with a lot of them is that is that the the skip the skill it. The fantasy isn't fulfilled because the it's too it's too the two sides are too um segregated. Right. Like you're e you're either do you're either doing your melee or you're doing your magic and the two of them don't have anything that complement each other. So what you end up is a yeah. gimped ass version of of both of each one. Right. Um yeah, totally understand. Totally understand. Yeah, the it this isn't like that, mm -hmm. fortunately, um, because it's basically instead of you instead of using maneuvers the same way that a battle master would, mm -hmm. you're instead using damaging cantrips. Um, one of the ones that, that I, I actually had to nerf it because it, it was really really powerful. Um, was life finds a way where you just sort of okay ignore. Go home. <laughs> it, 
<laughs> yeah, he may or may not have had a uh, an influence on that. Um, but but like you just sort of you you roll your damage. You, uh, excuse me. You roll your um, your superiority die and you subtract that from their AC. Mm -hmm. Like it's 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 pure martial, but you're using magic to supplement it. Yeah. And I'm, I'm guessing, I'm guessing that in the in the spirit of that, you're not having the lay blade fighter have a spe have a spell list that has to be dipped into. Nope. No spells. Just these maneuvers, mm -hmm. if you would. What do I call them? I call them uh, lay abilities. Yeah. So it's it's definitely ma it's definitely magic definitely magic adjacent, but you're not mm -hmm. a ca you're not a caster. You're and, not a caster, and um, I think I think that's an important distinction to make because a very easy way to add to add variety to players is just to give them more spells, which mm -hmm. I may be sounding a bit harsh on the on this, but from my perspective, that's a bit of a cop out, a bandage yeah. even. Yeah. No, I, I completely agree because you're not. You're not doing the work. You, as the creator, aren't doing the work to give them new cool abilities. You're just saying, "Here's a list. Go find something." Mm -hmm. And that's that's kind of what I wanted to avoid. Was you know, obviously, I'm giving you a list of of these abilities that you you know choose three or four or five of over the course of your adventure as a as a lay fight lay blade fighter, but these aren't spell like I'm not just throwing here's the standard spell book go go nuts these are I mean in some cases they're they're essentially sort of reskinned and reused cantrip actions but they're flavored in such a way as to as to focus entirely on the martial aspect mm -hmm. as opposed to like you said sort of standing with one foot in each class and and doing poorly at both yeah, it's. I'm very big. I'm very big on accomplishing the class fantasy. Mm hmm. Yeah. That's a really good way to put it. It's a really, really good way to put it. Like, why did? Why would some? Why would somebody? In growing up, growing up, you would pick. You would pick a barbarian because you want because you thought Conan was kick ass and you wanted to be Conan. Right. Uh and obviously, obviously, that's not it. That's not the that's not the case with ev with every instance. But I bring that up to illustrate the point. Somebody, mm -hmm. somebody is probably picking Ranger because they were a big fan of Legolas in in the in the um Lord, in the Lord of the Rings movie specifically. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And totally agree. If you end if you end up do if you do that if if you do if you make that choice and then you end up running into the problems that everybody's run into with the ranger, you're breaking the fantasy. Right. And right. Although when it comes to the ranger, to if I have to play devil's advocate, the ranger has been snake bit for years. This is not a new problem. Mm hmm. Oh. It it's not. I play a ranger in, in a campaign that I'm because participating in. I completely understand where you're coming there's from. There's the the big the there are two big pro there are two big problems that hold the ranger back and why they and why they keep trying to fix it. I and the both in first and third party. I think I've got 18 different <laughs> fixes of the ranger that I that just hap that I've either stumbled upon or or got sent to me. And yeah. I'm not saying what I'm not saying which one is the one that I use because that's not the point. Uh, it's the fact that it had to be 18 of them. Just I'm pretty sure there's more. I am very yeah. certain that there that other people have do, have done their own takes either on either on forums or or on um D, or on DMs Guild. Mm. But the point is is that so many people have come to the have come to realize that problem and the first problem when when it comes to something like a ranger is the fact that the druid exists right <laughs> the yeah. sec the second 
it's a little bit it's a little bit of a contradiction to have a class that is all about being outdoorsy in a game called Dungeons and Dragons. That's actually a fair point. I thought you I thought your second point was going to be that the fighter class exists. No. That would be too that would be too easy and I I'd be I'd be um <laughs> double dipping on the same gimmick. Yeah. The dru the druid is the bigger is the bigger problem although um somebody who somebody who knows what they're doing with a cleric or a druid can be an entire party all by themselves. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> now the of the other and uh, now going get, getting back into sane things um yeah. the uh, when it comes to the lay gift sorcerer how would that mess with sor how would that mess with sorcery i'm guessing one aspect is some expansion of meta magic unless you got something else in mind so this has gone over a couple of different iterations and i'm finally at the point where where i'm really really happy with this one um, so I wanted it to have, originally I wanted it to have sort of a random aspect to it. Like I wanted it to have sort of like the, the, the chaos, uh, not chaos, the, the wild magic sorcerer, mm -hmm. but that's so gimmicky. That's so gimmicky. So many items, like there's an entire class that does it. There's a class of barbarian that does it. Like there's a bunch of different sort of themes that that all sort of capture that sort of you know anything could happen idea um but i still wanted that sort of unexpectedness so what it is is you you the sorcerer you're born under a ley line or you're born under the effects of a ley line or at, at some point in your childhood and again this is up to the player to sort of weave this into their backstory um at some point, a ley line has impacted you greatly, and you have sort of absorbed its energy. And that energy within you can, can burst out. And the way that it works now, then I, I love this idea, but the way that it works is you have a 10% chance, so it's a 1d10 roll, on a 10, uh, whenever you do a damage spell, you roll that dice, and on a 10, you deal an additional uh, d6 of damage mm -hmm. for every level of the spell. Cantrips count as one. Um, so it turns, you know, like a, like a simple firebolt into what could almost be like a crit. You know, because you and it's it's whatever that ley line type of damage it was that you were imbued with. Mm -hmm. um, it's got that randomness aspect to it, but it's not. You cast fireball on yourself and blow your head off. It's it's in keeping with the ley line effect. Like my spell just accidentally blew out for more to like twice the damage I thought it was going to whoopsie daisy um and it's totally random and it's you know late sort of later on down the line you get the ability to to control it and to say okay I want it to come out now um and you use sorcery points to do that um but that was like I'm I'm super happy with this because you get to you get to have that randomness aspect of it but it's not useless it's not totally worthless, but it's not completely overpowering. Mm -hmm. Now, and lastly, among the among the th among the three that were mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, would be the way of the streets monk. And of of course, given my handle, I kind of have I kind of have to ask about that. Yeah, yeah. This one was one that I, I put down early, and I liked it, and I haven't touched it since. Um, so many monk classes are all about, oh, yeah, you know, bodily perfection. and I wanted, like, Kimbo Slice. You know, like, I wanted some guy who, who's out there just 
bare knuckle brawling um, and doing it with anything and everything that comes to mind. And part of anything and everything is magic. So what this does is it's actually, it is a half caster. Um, but the idea is that you're augmenting your fighting ability. So all your kicks and punches are being augmented by, um, by evocation and, um, um, illusion spells. So you can, you know, create an illusion to run, to duck and run from the guards like Aladdin, um, like Aladdin with magic. Like you can, you know, throw up a, a thing that's like, you know, I'm boxing this guy and I show him sort of like genuine, literal shadow feign going this way and then sucker punch him to, on the other side. Um, I just, I love the idea of someone who doesn't care, who goes for the groin, goes for the eyes, and is willing to use literally anything at their disposal, including magic that they just picked up from wherever they picked it up from to come out ahead. It's just such a dangerous, cool, scrappy class. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And given that given that since key is since key since key and key points use is central to the monk's kit. Mm-hmm. How do you how do you maintain that while still while still leaning into that whole way of the streets thing? Although I'm not sh- I'm not quite sure if I'd use Kimball Slice as an example because of that infamous fight he had with Dada Five Thousand. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that's fair. Like I, I know where, I know where you're going. I I have you know an idea where I'm coming from though. Like I have an idea like of came- where you're com- of where you're coming from, but um. But he came, you know, this, this was a guy who, like, he, he grew in notoriety for backyard brawls online to the point where he was offered a UFC contract. And he promptly fell on his face. Um, but, you know, like, but that that's kind of the thing that I was going for was like this, this just anything goes, no holds barred. There's no... There's there's nothing that's off limits to this guy. Um, you could you could have all, I'd say in that I'd say in that regard, um, the be, the best analogy would be the good would be the good old fashioned Pier Six brawler. Pier Six. Um, you know the 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 do, the dock worker fights. In in I mean, in the uh... in the old days. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. Oh. Just sort of anything, anything goes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so you asked about how balancing the two of them works. What I'm, what I'm um, more, it's more about integrating it so that, so that there's still options to use key, while yeah. still, while still fitting within the class, fa- still fitting within the fantasy of way of the streets. Yeah. So like I said, it's a little bit of both, right? You, like one of the one, like one of the descriptions I write is you fight dirty and you don't care. Mm -hmm. Um, Because as long as something is effective, it's not off limits. You take a cheap shot and that cheap shot can come in the form of punching someone Mm -hmm. in, you know, kidneys or in the, the groin, or you can cast a spell at them. And you can do it using spell slots as opposed to having to burn key slots like the like the elemental monk. Um, and you know you can use I think as you go further on, you can use flurry of blows to cast spells, like to cast lower level spells. Mm-hmm. Um, one of them is you know if you're fighting essentially by yourself, you can treat spell attacks as though they were normal attacks. You can just start firing off rapid fire. You know, as many spell attacks as you have spells for, but also as many as you have key points to to put out. Mm -hmm. 
and like that was sort of my my thought. Yeah. And um, I'm guessing that within this particular system, as powerful as it as powerful as it is, you can you can run the risk of bur- of burning out burning out your key points very quickly. Yep. That's the. I mean, that's the check. Mm-hmm. That's the. If if you're smart about using your key points, then you can go a long way. Or you can just blow them all in one go and absolutely annihilate somebody and then just be just a, you know, punching and kicking and just straight for the rest of the encounter. Now, with that in with that in mind, I think this is as good a time as any to talk about ley lines. Sure. Which is a concept that has been seen quite a bit in fi- in fiction, in in general and fantasy fiction especially. And mm-hmm. hell, I I've even used I've even dipped into it in my own work. But how ex? But what is the importance of ley lines? How how do they work? And how do they if how do they and Beyond beyond some of the subclasses we already talked about, how do they affect um, the gameplay loop of D and D? Yeah, um, that's a super good question. So, like I said, they're sort of magical weather, um, and just as you know, weather can impact you on any given day. Like you bundle up more, being from Minnesota. <laughs> um, on, on cold winter days, you wear more. Um, on, you know, hot summer days, you wear less. These are sort of are like that, but for spells. Um, you know, you sort of, there's, there's, a, there's an entire ministry in the city, in the empire, um, that exists to warn people like, hey guys, be careful, there's this ley line of this type in this area. So as... The adventurers go and and cast spells in whatever area they're going to. They will have to contend with the fact that it might blow up in their face, literally. Um, now, another way that it's used is in some of the items. Some of the items that that I created have work with that sort of with the ley line energy. The idea is you can use it, it, again, so much of this is at DM discretion. You can use it or you can ignore it. Um, the and and again it's sorry I said again twice. Um, the whole the whole idea is that it's it adds an, an element of sort of randomness to what is ordinarily an, uh, just a normal fight. Um, it's folded into some of the, the creatures. Like, instead of just having normal skeletons, you have skeletons that are enhanced with ley line energy. There's a whole table of, of effects that they can grant. And you, can cho- you as the DM can choose. I want to use this one. Or not. You can roll for it, and they can just have wild, random effects, and each one can have a different effect. Um, that sort of thing isn't available to players. Um, that's really sort of a DM-only thing, because I feel like that's that's something to sort of spice up the game. It's not ne- necessarily something to aid the player. Um, it, it impacts spells that the players do, spells that the players do, and spells that the, um, that the NPCs do. There's a boosted... Like, if I'm gonna cast a like a like a lightning spell, that's boosted. If it's under the effects of a uh, of a lightning ley line or under a thunder ley line, um, at the same time, it's potentially dampened by you know another type of ley line, um, and and the players have to sort of keep that in mind as they're casting their spells. Like, wait a minute, maybe Lightning Bolt isn't the one to cast this session because we're under the effects of, you know, of of a poison ley line, and that poison ley line really sort of dampens the lightning. Mm -hmm. And 
do you when it comes to generating um ley line effects are you going to are you going to be having a chart to allow gms to um yep get to essentially guide them with this since it is going to be a different approach yeah yeah it's again it's it's gm discretion you can choose it or you can roll it yeah um i prefer to roll i prefer to roll it if so, if only because i like using random tables just to see what comes up yep that and I am the, I am one of those sadists who will happily give m give my players the deck of many things and see how they screw it up. <laughs> Funny you mention that. I have one. I yeah, one. You, yeah. I saw the deck of fate. <laughs> it's I should have called it like the deck of game breaking or something because I I wanted it to derail campaigns, yeah, not you... not subtly either. You're not calling it the deck of game breaking is <laughs> that's the kind that's the kind of name I'd expect in I'd expect in the Monsters of America campaign setting where the whole thing <laughs> is meant to be one giant joke. Yeah, I mean, it, that's fair. It's they aren't jokes. Um, they're just they're just overpowered. And they're overpowered in both directions. Um, one of them, for example, is you become a specimen of perfection, all ability scores become 20. Um, right next to that is you lose 1d4 levels. Mm -hmm. You know, like something that's just, it's either going to break the game for you or it's going to break the game against you. And it just depends on how the dice fall. Mm -hmm. And it's up to the GM to, to to either roll with it or to use it to just punish the players. Which is cer is certainly fair. And I'm guessing when it comes to the adventure generator that's listed in the primer, um, mm -hmm. That same sort. That same sort of randomization is also present there if the GM needs it. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, like I said, we're going to be Shane and I are. We're working on this tool to sort of generate. Um, you know, different. Mo oh, I only have three players tonight. I thought I was going to have five. Mm -hmm. Great. Put that in, and you tell it. Okay, well, I'm doing adventure. Uh, you know, three. And it'll know, okay, this Venture 3 presumably is going to have three encounters, uh, and this is how you have to scale each one. Yeah. Now, given the Monster of the Week and the more, and the almost mission-based approach that it seems to be leaning towards from everything mm -hmm. that I'm seeing, I'm curious if you, if you guys have, if you guys have planned it where, where you, where the difficulty can be adjusted for different yep. le for different levels yep yep that's exactly right um, the so one of the things that, that is going to be included alongside that um, the monster one or maybe built into it but we still haven't really worked it through um, is going to be sort of like scaling DCs you know like it's going to take you this much to break down the door, or it's going to take you this this saving throw to resist um, whatever it is that that is in that particular campaign or that's that's in that particular scenario. Um, you're probably not going to see like different puzzles be generated, though that is an interesting idea. Um, but. Instead, it's going to be more like a sliding scale of these are the things that are going to bring you success versus failure, depending on how many of you there are and depending on what, what level you've decided to play at. I can, I can certainly get behind that. Nah. And on um, what level range are you going with? Are you going with any poten any potential level in the tw in the twenty level range, or do you have a specific um, a APL that you that you want to shoot for? No. Um, 
No, it it if I can be candid for a minute, it really really bothers me that so many one shots are made for like level two and level three because the whole point of leveling a character or of having a character at low level is not to remain there the entire purpose of having a low level character is to grow the characters to level up the character and just having a low level character in a one shot is is lazy in my opinion you touch on an interesting point and one and one that's not far off from something I discussed um, about a month ago, where I think one of the big reasons why there's that narrative of of um, the game getting boring at high levels, which incidentally is a is a self fulfilling prophecy, mm -hmm. Very is, much so. is because of is because of an over focus on bringing in new ple bringing in new people by making adventures for low levels. <sighs> Um, it's I'd actually like a really interesting idea. The, yeah, that's an interesting way, viewpoint. The analogy that I use with it is World of Warcraft has a problem with raiding these days because the developers have spent so much time trying to make it difficult for the world-first crowd, the cr the crowd that tries mm -hmm. to be the first to complete or complete a raid worldwide. And these mm -hmm. are the these are the ec these are the sweatiest of the sweaty when it comes to guilds, the top 0.01%. The problem is in doing that they've difficultied out every but a lot of a lot of um casual and e and semi casual um raiders yeah. because because the mechanics are so precise that you need everything to go right. Um, yeah. With with this whole this whole thing of of focusing on focusing on low level, it's basically the same problem just in the reverse. You're still focusing yeah. on one specific aspect to the exclusion of everything else, and once you get past that early spot, there's not a lot of support to help you out at that level. So you have to Completely. pray that you have an experienced GM, which is a bandage. Yeah. Right. No, you're hundred percent right. By the way, I totally know exactly what you're talking about. I used to be. I used to play WoW a lot <laughs> so you've probably noticed the world first problem just as just as much i mean i i stopped oh jesus it was 10 years ago um but yeah it was it, it was still apparent when i was when i was still playing yeah that they would just some of the tactics that you were required to do were just, were so precise required so much output required the absolute tip top gear in order to even attempt it um, and you know the sort of the idea that oh well you know you can sort of walk around this boss's area, or you could skip out on it. That kind of thing really just sort of rang hollow to 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 anyone who's played a video game in particular, but also people who play WoW and specifically because you want to experience all that stuff. Um, no, I, I, I completely agree. I've, I never thought of it that way, um, but I think you're absolutely you're absolutely spot on. The idea that we want to sort of bring in new players, we want to sort of bring in and have it be approachable, um, as opposed to putting in the effort to make something that's that can potentially work with anyone at any potential level. Um, no, I, I think you're absolutely spot on with that. With that hunch. Mm -hmm. Now, with that in with that in mind, what are you shoot What are you shooting for as far as a release window? Not a date per se, but a release, but a general ballpark. That's an excellent question. Um, later this year, I think is is the the idea. Um, we just finished the Kickstarter, uh, last week, I think. Yep. Um, it, it blew my expectations out of the water. Um, I don't, I don't remember the exact numbers that, that Shane quoted me, but they, I know that they were far more than I expected them to be. Um, and so now we're sort of, I'm, 
I'm more or less done with sort of the first draft of it. Mm-hmm. And so we're getting down into sort of the ticky tie nitty gritty aspects of things. You know, like specific wording, oh, you need to add this, you know, this sentence, this piece here. Why does it say that this way? Maybe change the wording, that sort of thing. Um, but I mean, the draft is done. Like the the world is built, Blumont exists, the, the the Empire exists, the Adventurers Agency exists. Now it's just you know, tying up all those loose ends. Mm-hmm. And what do you? I know I know you listed 150 pages, but what? But what? But um, is that the page count that you're shooting for? Or do you think it's going to get closer to, uh, to 175 with the s- stretch goals taken into account? I don't know. I'm really sorry. Um, part of the problem is every time Shane gives me some advice, I just go back and write more. <laughs> um, and so I I genuinely don't have any idea how long this is going to be. <laughs> Um, it's long. It's it's not a. It, it it's. It's long insofar as it, it's well fleshed out. Most, if not all of it, is. Not all of it. Sorry. Most of it is is really just sort of background. Um, it's important to know. It's not important to memorize. So the fact that it's a hundred and plus pages. I don't think should really deter anyone from picking it up just because it's that long. You're going to get most of it pretty quickly, and then the rest of it is either going to be reference or flesh, fleshing out parts of it that were explained earlier. Mm-hmm. Well, I will look forward to seeing how, to seeing what comes of it. But with all that said, I would like to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come Absolutely. on the show and, and enjoy the madness at play here. And anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often My say party. around here, yeah. drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I really, really appreciate it. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!